The Hudson River is the key to America. In the war for independence, whoever controls the river controls the future. By September 1777, British troops under General John Burgoyne have invaded New York from the north. They plan to secure the Hudson River, dividing the colonies and ending the rebellion. But Burgoyne's northern army meets heavy resistance at Saratoga and desperately needs help. From New York Harbor comes an expeditionary force of 4,000 British troops, commanded by Sir Henry Clinton, hoping to provide assistance to General Burgoyne. With them is the loyal American regiment, recruited by Beverly Robinson, one of the Hudson River's most prominent citizens. But standing in their way are men who also know and love the Hudson Highlands. Men like Jacobus Bruin from Kingston. For 18 months, the rebellious Americans have labored to build two major fortifications in the Highlands, Forts Clinton and Montgomery, mounting more than 50 cannons, and have placed a massive iron chain across the river to block the passage of any British ships. In three years of war, we have suffered many defeats and disappointments. Yet every patriot along this river must stand tall. For unless the enemy can be stopped, our lands, our farms, our homes, everything we worked for will surely be lost. Daily, we work to strengthen our defenses at Fort Montgomery. Except for bayonets, we are generally well armed and well supplied. But we need more men. People know me well across the Hudson Highlands. I have borne no malice to anyone, yet I sail now with a force bent on defeating many of my neighbors, including some I once called friends. This senseless war has forced me to choose between loyalty to my king and allegiance to a rebellion. For the past two years, I tried to avoid this, but the pressure on me has been unrelenting. With my knowledge of the countryside, I will now help lead an attack on Fort Montgomery. The rebels must be beaten. We must strike swiftly and with no reservation for the homes and property of every loyal subject along the Hudson, myself included, will be lost. I fear our time grows short. Brigadier General George Clinton, our newly elected governor of New York, has just arrived here to take command of Fort Montgomery. The general is uncertain where the enemy may attack the Highlands. Will Putnam send us more men? we still have not heard. The dream of a new nation still stirs the hearts and minds of all of us who are here. How can we feel anything but loathing for those who would see our dream destroyed? We must prevail. is heavy. All the better to conceal our landing downriver from the forts. 
We'll move inland to the pass over Dunderberg Mountain. Then at Doodletown, we'll divide our force. Roughly half will continue on to Fort Clinton, while the rest, including my regiment, will march west to Bear Mountain, across the Popolopin Creek, and into an attack position at the rear of Fort Montgomery. The march will be arduous, but with luck, we'll meet no resistance. Scouts report an enemy landing this morning with at least three times our number. The governor now sends urgent word to General Putnam across the river in Peekskill, requesting additional troops with all possible speed. Artillery will take out a field piece to oppose the enemy's march. Meanwhile, I will take 50 men and slow their approach. The road is barely passable, but the weather's been good and we've kept moving. Here they come. Our ships will soon be in position to bombard the forts from the river. Steady. When they do, our regiments must be in position to attack from the land side. Steady. Timing is critical. their assault. We must not let them get within the works. They're calling a parlay to meet with us? Flag of truce. What the devil are they up to? They offer to treat us fairly if we surrender? We offered them the same. Now there's nothing left to do but fight. If only they'd reasoned. Now we'll do what must be done. Troops surround us, and we have no reinforcements. We cannot defend every point on the works. Where is the governor?
Jacobus Brune. I might have known. God help him now. What now? We still live, but we live a nightmare. Fort Montgomery destroyed. We know nothing of our loved ones, nor the fate of our troops to the north. All we know is vermin, stench, and the rotting timbers of this foul, reeking ship. What's this? What? Burgoyne? And British defeated at Saratoga? God be praised. All is not lost. Yeah! How can this be? With Burgoyne's defeat, we're ordered back to New York Harbor. We leave to the rebels all we have gained. What will happen now to my home, the King's cause, and all loyal citizens along the Hudson? What a fair opportunity wasted. The Hudson River, deep and majestic. Today, from its peaceful shores to its picturesque parklands, the Hudson carries a legacy of conflict, of change, and of honor. Here upon these ruins that were once Fort Montgomery, a battle was fought. A battle too easily judged by what was lost. Yet history tells us otherwise. Here, brave men took a stand for liberty. A stand that would change the course of a nation. <laughs> 